The red and white flags waving away to our left as we get underway and a banner unveiled there. Danke, Didi, it says. Chelsea get us underway then. Chelsea knowing that a victory this evening would take them through to the last 16 of the Champions League with a game to spare. And they're in possession, playing from right to left. Here is Conor Gallagher, all the way back to Jorginho and now Thiago Silva on the halfway line. Kukurea picks it up now for Chelsea and will send the ball back to Thiago Silva once more. Now Chalaber out to the right-hand side. Salzburg will win possession though and come forward looking for Akafor who scored that goal, that late leveller at Stamford Bridge. But Chelsea intercept and have it with Kukurea in possession all the way back to Kepa. Red Bull Salzburg incidentally welcoming back former Brighton defender Bernardo from illness for this one and attacking midfielder Lukas Sucic. That's their two changes and their draw with Sturm Graz in the league. Still missing a few big players though. Captain Andreas Ulmer, midfielder Nicolas Capaldo is a big part of their pressing game. But we are going to keep an eye Leon Osman on Noah Oka for three of their four Champions League goals he scored this campaign as the ball is out of play for a Chelsea goal kick. Yeah, he's been a threat, hasn't he? He's had uh, eight attempts at goal and scored three occasions. So Chelsea will have to be aware of him. You can't give him too much room. You can't leave yourselves exposed, as we've spoken about just before the game. This Chelsea team being so attacking, the, you know, the worry would be to be conceding space on the counter-attack. So that's what they have to be aware of. But I expect Chelsea to have a lot of possession of the football in this game. We've already spoke. And they're coming forward now. A missed header back and a good save. In the end, from their number one, Philip Kunas. Havertz burst into the penalty area. Kunas stayed down here. The referee has stopped play. It was a nervy header back initially that put Kuhn, the goalkeeper, in all sorts of trouble. But he did well to get there just ahead of Kai Havertz. And he has stayed on the ground. He is now just lifting his head up from the turf and the medical staff are on. So, treatment early on for the Salzburg number one, Philip Kuhn, and we can take you through the lineup. It is Kuhn in goal for Salzburg. They're back four of Dedic, Bernardo, Pavlovic, and Rubert taking the armbands. Seibold, Gorner, Kjargaard, and Sucic in midfield with Okafor and Adamu up top. Chelsea with Kepa in goal, the back three of Chalabar, Silva, and Kukurea. Now it looks Leon Osman early on as though we were seeing the diamonds in midfield from Chelsea. So that would be Jorginho, Kovacic, Gallagher and Havertz with Pulisic on the right, Sterling on the left and Aubameyang up top. And that matches up the diamond in midfield for Salzburg as well. Yeah, it does. You know, we were we were discussing before the game. There was an opportunity that Havertz might go right up top, and Chelsea's midfield and Kovacic and Jorginho play a flat too. But it doesn't look like it looks like Jorginho is going to play deeper than Gallagher and Kovacic play right, not quite on the toes of, of Thiago Silva, but certainly them two working as a unit to make sure that Thiago Silva doesn't find himself one on one with uh, with either of those uh, Salzburg strikers. So that will free. Averts to just play in them pockets of space. He came deep and then he made that run in behind and he was putting pressure on Bernardo as he had to make place that header back to his goalkeeper and being under pressure, he, he seemed to look a little bit nervous, misplaced the header and Averts had every right to try and take that around the goalkeeper, but good, uh, good goalkeeper by Cohn. Yeah, big early chance for Chelsea and Havertz. A Salzburg pick up position with Seivald, one of their big players on the halfway line. Just 21 years of age. It is a very young side for Salzburg. They have just one outfield player. That's Andreas Ulmer, the captain, who is fit enough for the bench, if not the starting lineup this evening, over the age of 30. That's what Salzburg do. They like to bring through the young talent and they give them their opportunities as well, as the ball is all the way back with Philip Ulmer. Five minutes gone. Most of that time has been stopped for treatment to Ulmer now back outside the penalty area for Salzburg as they come down the right hand side here is Kovacic wins it for Chelsea steps away from the challenge of Seivold little interception by Seivold then who does get the foot in Havertz wins it back central position 30 yards out and Gallagher will play it in looking for a Bamiyang who couldn't take it in his stride and it's all the way back with their goalkeeper Philip Kuhn 
Yeah, Chelsea just outnumbering Salzburg there in the middle of the field. As I said, with with Havertz just dropping on the toes of of Gorner, just makes it very difficult for for Salzburg to get the ball and play through midfield. And when you've got a back three of Chelsea lining up with a front two of Salzburg, Kukarella can get really tight, Chalabar can get really tight, and then suddenly the wing backs of Chelsea being Pulisic and Sterling. I've got no one else to defend because the opposition are playing a narrow four. You're then matched up. You're up against the uh, the opposition's fullbacks, and suddenly you're no longer wing backs. Suddenly you're, you're wingers with with opportunities to get the ball and get at defenders. Gallagher in possession over on the far side wins the free kick for Chelsea midway through their own half. Goal is here on Five Live, and we were talking before the match, Leon, with Kelly about whether this is something from Graham Potter that he's trying something experimental knowing that Chelsea have this home game against Dinamo Zagreb who they've already lost to in this competition to come but is it also the fact that Chelsea haven't scored from open play in their last two games and actually from a tactical perspective with the diamond in midfield and playing the attacking wingers slash wing backs that he needs to do something to get Chelsea a bit more creative and we've certainly got an array of talent they have a talented players offensively on the pitch and Raheem Sterling drifting inside of the ball here. Comes to Aubameyang, cleared away on the edge of the Salzburg penalty area and will be picked up by Suchic who drives forward. Big player for them to have back the attacking midfielder pulled out of their last match against Sturm Graz after injuring himself in the warm-up but he's back in the side today and Chelsea back in position on the halfway line. Yeah, just mentioning them when Raheem Sterling has the ball. Suddenly had four players ahead of him. When that broke down, there was five players ahead of the ball. Here's Pulisic, left-hand side of the box, cuts the ball back. It's cleared away by Salzburg, just about. Pulisic will win it back, but he's deemed to have committed the foul just inside the penalty area. And he's not too happy with that, Christian Pulisic. He felt that was a fair challenge. Yeah, I thought that was a bit harsh. He just ran out of the pitch as he tried to cross the ball as that ricocheted out straight back onto the field shoulder to shoulder uh, I felt with that challenge but referee obviously deeming it to be a foul but Chelsea just looked like they're able to get players into much more advanced positions early and trusting themselves defensively there's a lot of responsibility on Jorginho in this game he can't make he can't let Susic run off him he's got to be in and around him and, uh, and that will have a great effect on his team Okafor plays the ball out to the right-hand side, picked up by Seivald, good challenge by Kovacic. And the ball will go out of play for a Salzburg throw. Seivald takes it quickly down to the edge of the penalty area. Should be cleared away by Chelsea. Kukure is clearance deflected back into the box. Chelsea will get a bit more distance on it with Thiago Silva. Kovacic, though, loses out and Salzburg pick it up once more. The ball in from the right-hand side from Dedic goes behind for a Salzburg corner. Eight minutes gone, nil-nil. They nearly created their own problems there, Chelsea just overplaying in the in the wrong area of the field in that left back area. Sterling and Thiago Silva just uh, just overplaying a little bit, just allowing Salzburg to put a bit of pressure on and force this corner. So corner to be taken from this near side for Salzburg. Chelsea with the blue shirts lining up on the edge of the area and in the six-yard box as well as the grey shirts of Salzburg are on the move and the header was one on the edge of the six-yard box and cleared away up towards halfway Salzburg will pick it up once more out to the right-hand side the ball drifted in and claimed by Kepper the cross from Kjargaard yeah second catch was or the second time the ball came into the penalty it was an easy catch for Kepper but the first time it came in for a moment it looked like Bernardo was going to have a, a pretty easy header from six yards out centrally but it was a brilliant header from Chalabar great challenge used his strength more than actually making clean contact with the ball just made sure it was a real tussle stopped uh, stopped a clear opportunity at his goal so Chelsea in position over on the right hand side Chelsea you know that a victory would send them through to the knockout stages of the Champions League with a game to spare if they can prevail in Austria tonight. The draw might do it as well. It would do if AC Milan beat Dinamo Zagreb later this evening. Kepa in possession, challenged, closed down quickly by Noah Okafor and Salzburg have won it back. Left-hand side of the box, good challenge by Jorginho on Okafor. But this is a good spell for Salzburg, nine and a half minutes gone. They've won another corner. Yeah, again, just guilty of overplaying slightly. It was Kepa on this occasion. Jorginho made a decent angle for him, but he chose to try and clip it out to Conor Gallagher, and he just under-hit the pass. Allowed Salzburg with three, four players 
up in possession. It was Gorner stepped in onto that left-hand side, won the ball back, and actually Jorginho did really well to make sure Chelsea just conceded the corner. So corner from the far side for Salzburg this time, swung in low, poor delivery. Cleared away by Chelsea up towards halfway. Goalless here at the Red Bull Arena in Austria. Ford once more by Didic. Won't be kept in over on the left-hand side and it will be a throw to Chelsea. But the red flags, the large ones, six or seven of them are waving away in the lowest stand down to our left. An early smoke flare has been extinguished as well. They unveiled a huge banner. The Red Bull Salzburg fans, a big Salzburg emblazoned in reds with a castle in the middle on a white background. It's that sort of show that we love in European competition. Got treated to the light show earlier as well, five minutes before kickoff. As Kemper has the ball just inside his own penalty area. Balls it out underarm to Chalibur and forward now to Conor Gallagher. The yellow boots having to move quickly because he was under pressure there. Back to Chalibur and up to halfway. Header one by Bernardo, formerly of Brighton. Chelsea get the foot in. Kukurea misses his header on the edge of the penalty area, but Thiago Silva composedly comes across and clears the ball away. But it's given away by Havertz on the left for Chelsea. And Dedic will come forward once more. Lovely turn by Thiago Silva who will clear into his own penalty area. Jorginho back to Kepa, who clears up towards halfway. Well, he's always very composed under pressure, Thiago Silva, but he's been put under a bit of pressure early on, sometimes by his teammates, as Pavlovich has it midway through the Salzburg half. Sends it forward, Chalabar with the interception for Chelsea, then he's blocked off, and wins the free kick just inside the Chelsea half. Yeah, Chelsea... When they're inside Salzburg half, look like they're playing in good positions, look like they're stretching the pitch really well. It's all natural to be moving the ball around, but when they're in their own half, they just look slightly exposed and one misplaced pass is just putting them in trouble. Excellent challenge by Gorner on the edge of the penalty area. And Chelsea will have to make do with the throw over on the far side. Midway through the Salzburg half. Goal is here on five live, a reminder that Later this evening, Borussia Dortmund against Manchester City will be our commentary from 8 o'clock with Ian Dennis and James McFadden. And tomorrow you can listen to Tottenham against Sporting Lisbon from 8 o'clock. Thiago Silva in possession for Chelsea, just outside his own penalty area. Chalabar forwards, Gallagher loses out to Gorner, whose ball forward is cut out by Jorginho, but swung into the penalty area from the left-hand side by Verbert too much on it, ball goes all the way out and Chelsea have a throw deep inside their own half and Chelsea, Leon Osman, certainly not having it all their own way at the moment. No, they're not. I just think at the moment Pulisic and Ster Sterling's starting positions are just five or ten yards too high because they're allowing the, the Salzburg fullbacks to play from a good position. They're finding it easy to stay close to the centre-halves and still pick up the Chelsea wing-backs. If they just drop five or ten yards, just given the Salzburg fullback something to think about do they go deep do they stay do they allow that ball then for Aubameyang to run the channels or Havertz to make a spin in at the moment it's very comfortable for the Salzburg fullbacks Gallagher plays the ball straight out of play but he had earlier been fouled so our referee Sandro Schurer of Switzerland pulls the play back and Chelsea have a free kick and work it out to the right hand side and Conor Gallagher with space to drive into has the option of Pulisic on the right and now finds Pulisic who goes back to Jorginho midway through the Salzburg half. Nil-nil here in Austria on five live. Kukurea now as Chelsea work it to the left. Out to Raheem Sterling and Kovacic with the loose pass will play the ball out of play inadvertently and it's the throw for Chelsea. For Salzburg, I should say, midway through their own half. Yeah, he's just disappointed in himself there, Kovacic. We know his quality. It doesn't matter how hard you fire a ball into him. More often than not, he brings it down with a tight touch and a good bit of play. But I think that's the second occasion. He's just allowed his touch to get away from him and so unlike him. Ball forward, looking for Okafor, dealt with by Thiago Silva. Seibold loses out in the centre to Havertz, who plays it forward to Kovacic, but Chelsea still penned inside their own half. Kukurea, ball right across the edge of his own penalty area, split two Salzburg grey shirts, and fortunately for Chelsea, 
found Chalabar. Pulisic now over on the right-hand side, but the pass is just not coming off at the moment for Chelsea, and that's credit to Salzburg because they're anticipating them well. Okafor lays it off as Salzburg drive forward once more into the penalty area, and it's over from Sucic, but that's a chance. Yeah, it is, and again it comes because of a short ball down the side where Pulisic is not sure, does he come short, does he go long, allows the fullback to step in, win the ball, and, and from there they broke through the centre of, of that Chelsea midfield far too uh, uh, far too easily, and running in, breaking, decent shot over the top of the crossbar, but uh, I don't think that Sucic's shot, shot was ever really troubling Kepa. Well, he's yet to score this season, Luka Sucic, just 20 years old, he did make the long list for the Golden Boy Awards this year, given to the best player under 21 in Europe as Salzburg win it again down the left-hand side, but the ball will go out of play for a Chelsea throw. What, what I love about this stadium as well, Leon, is that the technical areas are absolutely massive. They're far apart from each other, but they almost cover half a half each. So you have the halfway line, then you have probably about 15 yards or so, then you have a huge technical area, and it means that the managers, particularly Matthias Jaisler, the Red Bull Salzburg manager, who is just 34 years of age, can run along basically his whole half of the pitch and he's, he's always out of the technical area as well so he doesn't even need to stay within that wide dotted line as Salzburg have a throw with Dedic on the halfway line. Yeah he's been very animated hasn't he for the first 15-16 minutes of this game Graham Potter just stepping out into his technical area as you've as you've mentioned that as well but these modern day stadiums are absolutely fantastic the um, what they're able to do with the spaces how they make them look how many how much space they give the players and the management teams to, to get on with doing the best job they possibly can Salzburg with the throw as they advance further into the Chelsea half Salzburg who so far you could argue they've just shaded this one and the Ball in will come to Kjarsgaard over on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Well marshalled by Gallagher and then well dispossessed by Gallagher as Chelsea look to counter. Pulisic won't keep it in. But the clearance is made by Werber over on the far side and it will be a Chelsea throw, Leon Osman. I think what Salzburg are doing well at the moment, we spoke about Chelsea's back three being up against a front two, that the Chelsea wing-backs are trying to get up against the, uh, the Salzburg full-backs. But what's happening in midfield is... Uh, Kjogar and, and Seiveld are, are just running off the midfield too of Chelsea, off Kovacic and off Gallagher into those fullback areas. And as a midfielder, when that happens, you, you're so accustomed to just leaving him, letting him run onto the spaces because more often than not, he's running into a fullback. But tonight, they can't let them go. They have to stay with them when they run into those spaces. Kovacic in possession for Chelsea. 18 minutes played, 0 0 on a night where Chelsea know if they win. They'll be through to the Champions League knockout stages with a game to spare. The foul by Junior Adamu just inside the Salzburg half and Chelsea will have a set piece. Jorginho stands over it and plays it out to the left-hand side and Raheem Sterling, the run being made by Havertz just in front of him, cuts it back looking for Sterling, good interception. Bernardo will help clear it away and it's out of play for a Chelsea throw but sliding in there was Seiveld and got that Absolutely spot on, very good challenge from the key midfielder for Salzburg as Chelsea work it down the left again. Havertz won't reach that, shepherded out by Bernardo. And it's a Salzburg goal kick, nil nil. Yeah, Raheem Sterling just overplaying the pass there, but I think that's when Chelsea have looked a little bit dangerous when Sterling or, or Pulisic is saying why Havertz is getting over to that side of the field. One of the, the three centre halves, it's Cucurella on this occasion, also coming down that side of the pitch and they're able to just have a couple of passes and try and overload Salzburg in those areas. So Philip Kuhn preparing to take this goal kick for Salzburg, had a very good game at Stamford Bridge in the 1-1 draw, draw earlier in this group. Big save late on from Hakim Ziyech to preserve that point for Salzburg. He can't keep possession inside the Chelsea half and Thiago Silva sent it out to Kukurea on this left-hand side and now Jorginho in field to Chalibur down the right and it just opens up here so Chalibur will drive over the halfway line lays it off to Pulisic and now Conor Gallagher Chelsea making headway but the ball from Gallagher forces Sterling to retreat he will keep it in just in front of Matthias Jaisler the Salzburg manager and Chelsea work it out to the right-hand side. Spreading the play from left to right. Nil-nil here on Five Live as the challenge is made. The clearance by Vuba. 
and Chelsea send it all the way back to Kepa. Well, there's a couple of occasions the ball's just gone forward now into Aubameyang and Pulisic. On that occasion, we've spoke about Kovacic giving the ball away in midfield. You just need them to be a little bit better in possession of the ball, giving the ball away far too cheaply. Chelsea are, are working hard to manipulate the ball up the field, use the spaces, and when they get there, quality players need to be much better in possession. Here is Jorginho. Sends it out to the left-hand side and Kukurea over the halfway line. Field to Aubameyang. Now Kovacic. The challenge was made by Nicholas Seibold and it will be a free kick to Chelsea. Midway through the Salzburg half and Jorginho will leave it for Kovacic to get things moving again quickly. Out to the left and Sterling, but Salzburg very disciplined. This formation is something they're so used to. The four at the back, the diamond in midfield, the two up front. They're well drilled. They're well marshalled, the Austrian champions, as Chelsea work it out to the right once more. Yeah, well, that was better from, from Chelsea and from Pulisic in particular. Gallagher ran into his space, Pulisic dropped deep and suddenly they managed to get the ball in a lot more spaces because up to this point, as you mentioned, Salzburg distances are very good. They look well trained in, in what they're doing defensively. They look like they're able to, to get about the pitch really, really well. So Chelsea are, are keep a decent possession of the ball, but not really looking like they're going to create something at the moment. And they're in possession in the centre circle. Yes, this Salzburg side unbeaten in their last 17 games in all competitions. Yes, they tend to dominate in Austrian football, but that includes the draws with Chelsea and AC Milan. They are no pushovers, as we said at the start of this match. And they're holding Chelsea relatively comfortably at bay so far. 21 minutes played, Chelsea on halfway. And you have to say, Philip Kuhn, the Salzburg goal has not had a save to make so far. As Thiago Silva has it in the centre circle, other than that early one from Kai Havertz, who was played in by the poor header back from Bernardo, the former Brighton man. What can Pulisic down? Down the left for Chelsea. Plays it back into the centre circle, and Thiago Silva, and now Kukurea, just inside the Salzburg half. It's patient from Chelsea. It's having to be because they're struggling to play through the grey shirts here. Out to the right-hand side, now goes Aubameyang, who's dropped into a wide position. But again, Salzburg get the foot in and just force Chelsea back to the centre circle where Thiago Silva could set up shot there, couldn't he? He hasn't moved from there in the last two and a half minutes or so. No, he hasn't, so Chelsea might not be creating something at the moment, but they are in control of the game. Gallagher's ball into the area, looking for Havertz. Will be won by Pulisic, Havertz once more, sorts to get another foot in, and the shot from the edge of the area is a beautiful one from Kovacic into the top corner. And Matteo Kovacic gives Chelsea the lead at Salzburg. The patience has paid off for Graham Potter's side. It's Chelsea who lead 1-0 in Austria. Well, that is a sensational finish by Kovacic from the edge of the penalty area. The ball's just bouncing his way, a bit of a ricochet, and he hits it on the half volley. It was good play all round by Chelsea. I mentioned the control that they were having, that Silva was on the halfway line, moving the ball from side to side, and suddenly Gallagher, I think it was, delivered the ball into an area. I think that uh, Chelsea had numbers in there. Havertz is the one that attacks it. Suddenly he's fighting for it in the middle of the pitch. Comes his way again, Pulisic involved. And they're just they're just scrapping, trying to get that half a yard. And the defender gets his foot in, just toe pokes it towards the penalty edge of the penalty, just off the toes of Habit. Comes to Kovacic, that is an unbelievable reaction to open his foot up and pretty much side foot it more than the laces right into the top corner. The goalkeeper, pretty much on his knees, can only watch it go in and that was Chelsea's first foray, really, into, into the Salzburg penalty area, but what a wonderful finish to put them ahead. Their first foray, Kovacic's first goal of the season. And as Leon Osman says, what a beautiful goal it was. Chelsea ahead, Salzburg with the player down. Chelsea still coming forwards. Salzburg with the player down inside Chelsea's half. So Gallagher will try his luck from the edge of the area. The deflection off Kjargaard takes it behind for a Chelsea corner. The Salzburg fans not happy because Adamu in some distress here, but the referee's whistle doesn't go. You play on now, and Chelsea entitled to do that. They have a corner, but the medical staff are on to treat Junior Adamu, so there will be a delay before Chelsea, leading by a goal to nil, take this set piece. Yeah, you can hear that the, the home fans there weren't pleased. The fact that Chelsea 
carried on and didn't knock the ball out. But you're right, it's it's up to the referee now to, to decide if he felt that was a, uh, maybe a head injury or a serious injury to stop the game. It wasn't, it was just a challenge. Adamu stood on the ball, Raheem Sterling challenged him. He just went to ground. Maybe it was the fall more than anything that's, uh, that's caused the Salzburg striker to stay on the floor. But Chelsea had every right to break there. I'm surprised they, they didn't break with a little bit more desire and a bit more pace having the overload, but they have forced a corner. So Adamu back up to his feet. Salzburg might feel that even if Chelsea didn't kick the ball out, they could have had a foul there. But the decision doesn't go their way. And they now have a corner to defend. Salzburg who haven't lost here since February 2021 in any competition, but are behind to Kovacic's quite beautifully struck goal from the edge of the penalty area. Chelsea looking to add to that lead with Gallagher who swings the corner in towards Aubameyang, a brilliant save and then can't be converted by Havertz on the follow-up. What a save that was from Kuhn and Aubameyang's header. Chelsea have kept it in on this far side. They've been forced midway back through the Salzburg half who now will clear the header up by Pavlovic towards halfway. What a stop that was by the 24-year-old keeper and Havertz really could have stuck away the rebound. Yeah, he's, uh, it was such a good save because not only did he thwart Aubameyang who dropped into that space just on the corner of the six-yard box from that outswinger from Gallagher and he flicks it towards the far post. It takes a flight, slight deflection off the defender Verber, but as he's going to it, full save, Kuhn, he flicks it away from the in-rushing Havertz who thought he was tapping it in at the back post and makes sure that somehow he keeps his team only 1-0 behind. Chelsea starting to hit their stride though as Kovacic will allow that ball to go out of play for a Chelsea throw. Chelsea who themselves are of course still unbeaten under Graham Potter looking to make that nine in a row since his arrival. As Mark Kukurea prepares to take this throw for Chelsea. Well that's the difference you know when Chelsea haven't necessarily lost the game you know they've just had a moment of control inside the Salzburg half they've not created an awful lot but if you play a, a certain formation that allows you to get a lot of players into the opposition penalty area once you get the ball in you're a threat you know the opposition start panicking there are so many players in good areas Kovacic on the edge of the penalty area right in the center of goal as a central midfielder normally he'd be 20 30 yards deeper than that not in this occasion not with this system gives him real opportunity to get forward with the Jorginho behind him and did he take advantage and that is why Chelsea lead in Austria by a goal to nil here goes the center half Pavlovic driving forward cleared away by Chalabar Salzburg will have a throw over on the far side midway through the Chelsea half Chalabar gets a foot in again on the edge of the penalty area the decision goes Salzburg's way as the ball bounces out of play. 28 minutes played in this first half. It's Chelsea who lead by a goal to nil, but Salzburg coming forward, trying to pick it up on the edge of the penalty area with Sucic, cleared away by Thiago Silva. Pavlovic wins the header, stepping into the Chelsea half. Put in by Pulisic, will bounce on the edge of the Chelsea penalty area, and Thiago Silva gets there ahead of Sucic once more. And the ball's out of play for another Salzburg throw. Well, we don't see that very often, do we? Thiago Silva with probably not really any time, but prepared to absolutely welly it as hard and as high and as far away as he can. Good old-fashioned defender from the Chelsea centre-back. Corner wins it back for Salzburg ahead of Kai Havertz and sends it all the way back to Philip Kuhn, who has kept it at 1-0. That save from Aubameyang's header, which, as Leon Osman says, took a key deflection off Verba to make it an even better save from the Salzburg number one. Here is Gorna once again, central midfielder, and back to Pavlovic and out to the left-hand side, and Verba, the left-back, who might try and swing one of those teasing deliveries in. Instead, he finds Okafor on the edge of the box. Chelsea get the foot in, and they're coming forward now with Pulisic, who goes down and wins the free kick just inside the Chelsea half and I think Leon Osman is one of those <laughs> nights where the home crowd is not really going to agree with any decision that the referee gives against their side. Yeah of course I thought you were going to pull me up because I was trying to encourage Pulisic in from our position to run with the ball drive forward he had so much space and pretty much every occasion he's had the ball he's 
it's faced up the centre, uh, sorry, the fullback he's up against, but then turned back in and played a, a sideways pass. He had space to break into and he eventually ran into it and they, have had, they had to bring him down because when he's travelling with the ball and that, he is a threat. Half an hour gone, Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. Kovacic's well, first time strike from the edge of the penalty area. Another beautiful goal from the Croatian. And a goal that, as things stand, with an hour still to play at the home of the Austrian champions, is sending Chelsea through to the last 16 with a game to spare. They just need a win tonight. So far, so good. Thiago Silva just outside the centre circle. Square it to Kukurea. Now forward to Kai Havertz, who is drifting everywhere at the moment in this midfield formation for Chelsea as Thiago Silva sends it across to Chalabert. Well, Vicky, that's why they're starting to get a little bit of joy because for the first was it 25 minutes of the game, he stood right up against Gorner, who's the holding role, holding midfield player for Salzburg, and he was easy to mark. And everyone else, as I mentioned, is man to man. But suddenly, Havertz has started moving all around the field. Gurner doesn't want to go with him, and Chelsea are getting overloads. Lovely skill initially by Kovacic, but then runs into the aforementioned Gurner. Chelsea have it back though with Jorginho, and all the way back to Kepa. He plays it out to Thiago Silva, closed down by Noah Okafor. Always keep an eye on him. Graham Potter will be thinking has done very well, the 22-year-old for Salzburg in the Champions League so far this season. Chalaba in possession, just on the edge of the Chelsea penalty area. Closed down by Kiagard there, but Chelsea do work it out. And Jorginho will play it forward. This is nicely worked by Chelsea. And it's created a huge amount of space here for Havertz. Havertz bearing down on goal, squares it to Aubameyang. This should be 2-0. Big save by Kuhn and cleared away by Kiagard. But really, Aubameyang should have given Kuhn no chance there. Chelsea try and pick it up with Gallagher. They do. And have it back on the halfway line now with Kukurea. It should be 2-0 Chelsea. Oh, that would have been as good a team goal from back to front, under pressure, in possession of the ball that you would have seen. But for some reason, Aubameyang just want a second too long before he pulled the trigger, allowed the goalkeeper to come out and make a pretty good save at his feet. Chelsea in possession with Kovacic, who has the only goal of the game so far. And now Chalibur, but yes, two big chances for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So far, Kuhn getting the better of him. Well, the first one he was unfortunate it was a reaction heading it towards the far post. That one was his bread and butter. Havertz gave him the ball at the perfect time. Only one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Took a touch, slowed himself down and, and then just took another step and another step as if he was waiting for the goalkeeper to make a decision. He didn't. He stood up big and tall and made the save. Here is Gallagher in possession midway through the Salzburg half. Right to the right-hand side and Pulisic. Salzburg nil. Chelsea won here on five live. Commentary of Borussia Dortmund against Manchester City follows us from 8 o'clock this evening. Ball back into the Chelsea half with Thiago Silva and now square to Chalama. Forward now to Pulisic. As Chelsea look to build on what is becoming a dominant in possession, creating some good chances as well. So far, just the one goal as Jorginho plays it over the top. Sterling, very good covering challenge by Bernardo out for Chelsea throw. Yeah, it was a good run from Raheem Sterling, not just prepared to stay out high and wide as a fullback, still making that dart and run inside, inside Dedic as the right back, you know, towards the, the centre half. And, you know, if you can pick the right pass as it nearly was there, suddenly you can potentially be in on goal. Havertz doesn't pick the right pass there behind Sterling, and Warner will bring it forward for Salzburg. They find Okafor over the halfway line, bearing down now on the Chelsea penalty area. Will go for goal. It's tame. It's straight at Kepa. Yeah, for the talent that we've seen him have this season and his finishing ability, that was a, a pretty tame effort. Had people up alongside him. Kiergaard run on his left hand side, created the space for him to to come in and he decided to unleash his shot from about 22 yards and Kepa was so comfortable he was pretty much on the floor before the ball arrived at him and uh, brought it into his chest very easily. Ball intercepted by Salzburg over on the far side by Verber but Chelsea will win it back Salzburg win it back with Pavlovic the young centre half who occasionally does join the attack, as he's done now. They've lost possession, Salzburg, so he has to get back now, Pavlovic. Instead, he tries to come and challenge 
Kovacic who steps away from that and plays the ball out to the left hand side and Sterling approaching the penalty area plays it forward to Havertz who cuts the ball back there's nobody in a blue shirt there it's a great cut back from Kai Havertz but it can't find Aubameyang can't find Sterling Chelsea in possession on the left do you blame Havertz for that or do you blame Aubameyang and Sterling for not getting in the right position do you know what I blame I blame the man who's got his hands on his head on just arriving on the edge of the penalty area Conor Gallagher I didn't see a starting position but he knows that was his position that's where he should have been arriving good position now for Gallagher right hand side of the penalty area lifts it in Havertz is in there and the header was almost spilled by Kuhn he gathers at the second attempt and Havertz swings the left boot at the post in frustration because the header was tame he was almost gifted a goal by Kuhn but the goalkeeper recovered and again it's another big chance for Chelsea for the second oh that is a tame tame header from Kai Havertz middle of the goal probably four or five yards out maybe and he just cushions it back to the goalkeeper who can't believe his luck that it arrives at his, at his chest. Yes, it bounces first. It's, you know, he had to keep his eyes on it, but it's a brilliant run from Conor Gallagher. Just spun off his midfield marker down the side of the centre-back, uh, Pavlovich and, and, and Volva, the left-back, got in the space. And when you say, pick someone out, be composed, do the right pass, he put it into a brilliant position. And for the second time after that, Aubameyang miss only five or so minutes ago, it's a really, really poor finish from Chelsea. So it is still just the one goal that Chelsea lead by as Okafor picks it up down by the corner flag. Kjergaard is up there asking for it. Okafor just held up there by Chalabar. We'll pull it back to corner. Now Okafor once more. Wide left, trying to dribble his way into the penalty area. Chalabar stands up very well there. He's done well. Chalabar once again. He has and Graham Potter's out into his technical area clapping clapping his defender it was uh, it was brilliant 1v1 play it's always difficult when you're playing against a player like Okafor and he's backed you into your penalty area and he's doing step overs and he's manipulating the ball you have to keep your eye on it you have to not just necessarily watch the player and you have to use your the strength that you have and he did all of that very very well it looks looks like the uh, looks like he's playing in real form at the minute Chalabar yeah very much so and with those defensive injuries that Chelsea still have Wesley Fofana, Koulibaly still out for this one, Rhys James. It's important for Graham Potter to have players in form because he's having to reach up and he's trying different things tactically in that back three. We've seen him switch to a back four in the last match as well against Manchester United midway through the game. But to have a player in form like Chalabar as Chelsea win a free kick with Havertz just outside their own penalty area is key. Yeah, and when you are, like to Chalabar, that is not always necessarily the first player on the team sheet. When you're given your chance or when you're asked to play, you've got to make sure you're at the level required. And every time I've seen him, he has been. Yes, I think there's been one or two mistakes in, in there throughout his Chelsea career, but seems to always perform to a higher level. And, and his record in a, in a Chelsea shirt is pretty impressive as well. Yeah, just seven starts this season for Trevor Chalabar but has been starting regularly of late and as we say is impressing as the ball goes out of play for a Salzburg throw we've already had the attendance announced just over 29,500 that's a sellout for the Red Bull Arena that's Austrian efficiency now I'm not sure I've seen the attendance announced in a half, first half before Skepper plays it out to the left hand side in Kukurea here is Silver again the grey shirts of Salzburg very happy they employ the press and as Kepa has it inside his own penalty area you can see the organization they have they're just all on the same wavelength they know when to go they go as a unit they are impressively marshaled by their manager Matthias Jaisele yeah they are but again Chelsea when they're brave in possession like that and they're, and they're, they're playing at the quality that we expect no straight touches no misplaced passes keeping the ball they will find that spare man, and again, it's Kai Havertz. Thiago Silva able to drop a 40, 50-yard pass, float it into Kai Havertz, dropping comfortably on his uh, on his right thigh because he's pulled into a brilliant space. Salzburg win possession. Thiago Silva wins it back, but Salzburg have it once more with Thiago. The effort wide of the post as Kepa was diving, had it covered the Chelsea goalkeeper. But he looks dangerous, doesn't he, Kjargaard, when he picks up the ball in those areas coming in off the left-hand side? Yeah, well, he's just running off, off Conor Gallagher, who's not necessarily doing a man-to-man -man job. I don't know if that's how Chelsea want to line up. They, they come narrow. Kjargaard just stays out wide in the pocket in between Pulisic and Chalabar. 
He's received a couple of passes in there now, and that's where Salzburg have had their joy. You know, the two or three efforts they've had on goal have all come from that particular space. All over the halfway line from Kepa. Chelsea leading by a goal to nil. Five minutes plus out of time to play in this first half. A reminder, you can listen to all the reaction from this match and Manchester City's game at Borussia Dortmund later on the Football Daily podcast. Just download that from BBC Sounds. Havertz in possession, tries the little back heel, cleared away by Bernardo, but into Havertz. So Havertz will chase it. Gorner gets there first. Salzburg will clear it away with Dedic. Forwards looking for Adamu. He's dispossessed and Raheem Sterling will pick it up, but he is muscled out of it by Seibold, who tries to get Salzburg away. Well read by Jorginho and all the way back to Thiago Silva. They just can't really keep the ball for any sustained amount of time at the moment, Salzburg. When they do win the ball back, they're trying to go forward as quickly as possible on the counter-attack and players to expose this Chelsea midfield and defence, but Chelsea then win the ball back and for the most part have kept it very, very well. Seibold misses his interception there and Gallagher will send it out to the left-hand side and Sterling. Here is Kovacic, the goal scorer. Under pressure, good pressure from Bernardo just stepping out there. Chelsea forced all the way back to Thiago Silva, but control is the word. You feel that Chelsea have control of the possession, they have control of this match, even though it's just the 1 0 lead as the ball goes out of play. But Jorginho has been fouled there, so Chelsea will have a free kick just inside the Salzburg half. Yeah, when they get into Salzburg half, especially with Thiago Silva standing right in the middle of that centre circle, they do look into control. You've got Sterling hugging one touch line, Pulisic hugging the other, Aubameyang stretching the pitch big, which is allowing the midfield four just to find pockets of space and keep the ball very, very well. And it's it took a bit of patience for them to create that first goal, but since then they've had a number of opportunities from doing so. Yeah, that the only downside really from this first half so far for Chelsea and Graham Potter that they haven't got the second goal. A couple of very, very good saves from Philip Kuhn. The Chelsea's attacking players, I think, might look at a couple of those chances as well and say, well, really, we shouldn't have given the goalkeeper the option as Salzburg win possession midway through their own half. Forward to Junior Adamu, Kukurea steps up, makes the challenge. Colin Gallagher will pick it up. Now Pulisic, all very tight and congested in the centre of midfield, as so Chelsea will go all the way back to Kepa, who comes out of his penalty area and sends it forward to Kukurea. Here is Havertz now, back to Kukurea and now Thiago Silva. Such a big part of this Chelsea defence that has conceded just three times in eight games under Graham Potter. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm sure why Chelsea would have brought him in. What he did at Brighton, there's so much to praise, but that defensive stability and to be able to build on that and also build an attacking style of play as Gallagher goes down into the free kick. We're seeing that with Chelsea tightening up, having conceded 10 goals in their previous seven games under Tuchel this season. Yeah, and they've, they've done it, but they've been better in possession. They've been pretty impressive, you know, bar in that first 10 minutes where it took them a while to grow into the game. With Jorginho sat in front of that back three, he's just a pivot to get the ball and keep it moving. He's an option for them all the time. And as soon as they break that first line of, of press from Salzburg, they're causing them an abundance of trouble. Chelsea play the free kick short and work it down the left-hand side. Here is Kovacic, Aubameyang, back heel, Sterling into the area. Havertz leaves it, Aubameyang ran onto it, and Kuhn comes out and makes the save. And the free kick has been given against Aubameyang, who might have just caught Kuhn there. But again, what movement from Chelsea. If they could just have finished it off, it would have been gorgeous. Yeah, Raheem Sterling with the eventual through ball. And there were three Chelsea players all feeling they could potentially go for it. I think Havertz realised he was probably in an offside position. Kovacic probably couldn't tell. And Aubameyang called them both away, eventually challenging the goalkeeper who came out again really quickly at the feet of Aubameyang. But it's wonderful pass and play. It's crisp. It's it's uh, it's of a good tempo. It's, it's 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 exact. It's exactly what Graham Potter will have been working on. And I think he'll just be really frustrated that his team haven't scored more than one goal in this first half. And that's it. As Kuhn prepares to take this free kick for Salzburg, for all Salzburg's organisation, for all their discipline, for all their tactical nows in the way that they shape up. When Chelsea get going like that, Salzburg can't stop them. 
No, not at all. And they won't come up against many teams who can be as comfortable in possession in such tight areas as this front five or six that Chelsea have got on show here tonight. And at the moment, they're, they're causing Salzburg's midfield three, especially a heap of problems. Red Bull Arena unhappy again because Adamu's given away a free kick, but it was a free kick from the Austria international on the halfway line. And the referee, Sandro Schurda, is just making that point as we enter one minute of added time at the end of this first half. Sucic is being told to move away by the referee and Kukurea will prepare to take this free kick with Chelsea leading by a goal to nil. Kukurea will send it forwards, headed away by Bernardo. Sucic will chase and win that and it's ball from Kiargaard looking for the run of, of the four but <laughs> Thiago Silva, 38 years young, is across quickly to stop the 22 year olds and Chelsea can counter down the left hand side with the Bamiang, Bernardo with the foot in Chelsea throw. Yeah, he did well there, Thiago Silva, he never seems to find himself exposed does he? I thought for a moment Chalabar had just put himself in a slightly wrong position and they were going to get in behind him, but Thiago Silva's position was excellent. Spotted that his teammate was slightly in trouble and, and got over there. But not only did he get over there, he then keeps possession of the ball for his team. Kept him well by Havertz on the left-hand side. Twisting away from Seavold. Flick forward by Kovacic. Sterling, Aubameyang, penalty area. Oh, what a great save once again by Kuhn. He's having his own personal battle with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And that is the last action of the half. There's no time to take the corner. Well, 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 Chelsea lead by a goal to nil at the break, but were it not for Kuhn in particular, well, they could be out of sight. They could be, they should be, maybe. I think that effort from Aubameyang was probably as well as he could do. He decided to hit it hard with pace in the corner. It was a fantastic save yet again from, from Kuhn. But again, wonderful play, great crisp passing, flicks around the corner, players getting into brilliant positions, and that's been the story of the first half from Chelsea. Once they got going, once they found their positions on the field, they've, they've made chance after chance and chance, and they've looked really, really good. However, this is the Champions League, and if you don't convert your chances when you're on top of the game, especially away from home, you can find the second half going to be much more difficult than, than you would have wanted it to be, and that'll probably be the message from Graham Potter at halftime. You've got to now go out and do this all over again, but get more goals. And they had the warning at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea. They took the lead in that match. And Salzburg penned them back late on. It is the slender goal advantage at the break. The last action of the half. Kuhn pushing that Aubameyang effort onto the post. But at half-time in Austria, it's Salzburg nil. Chelsea won. I know you're saying that if you don't take your chances in the Champions League, then the opposition is such that maybe it can come back to bite you in the in the second half. But have Salzburg created enough to, to make Chelsea nervous of that? No, not really in this first half. But, you know, we spoke about their record here at home. They don't know mm. when they're beaten. And if Chelsea get to the 70th, 75th minute and it's still only 1-0, Salzburg will turn the heat up in this stadium, they'll make changes, they'll put more energy in and then suddenly, instead of having a, a comfortable last 15-20 minutes of a game because you're actually 2-3, maybe even 4-0 up because, you know, the chances Chelsea have had, they, they may have been, suddenly you're defending a 1-0 lead and, and anything can happen at that stage, it doesn't matter what's come in the first 75 minutes, suddenly the home team can get a little bit of momentum, get you on the back foot, you're defending the edge of your penalty area and then it's a very difficult last 10 minutes of the game. Leon Osman, Vicky Sparks, thank you very much. Back with you for the second half of that game between RB Salzburg and Chelsea. Been a really good first half from Chelsea, but they lead by just the one goal to nil. Second half commentary of that coming up. And then later on, uh, Manchester City are in Dortmund. We'll bring you commentary of that one from eight o'clock. Another game kicking off at 5.45. Sevilla taking on FC Copenhagen. That one is goalless as things stand. That's in Manchester City and Dortmund's group as well. Coming up, we'll bring you the rest of the day's sports news headlines. First, though, the BBC News with Anna Preston. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. 
A cabinet reshuffle is taking place at number 10 after Rishi Sunak formally took office as Prime Minister. Several of Liz Truss's closest allies have resigned or been sacked, while the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, who was brought in two weeks ago to steady the financial markets, is staying. Other key appointments include Dominic Raab returning as Deputy Prime Minister and Justice Secretary and Suella Braverman coming back as Home Secretary just six days after she was sacked for breaching the ministerial code. Labour's Jonathan Ashworth says the appointments are a case of deja vu. These are the old faces from the Boris Johnson cabinet that helped give us the economic crisis the country is now grappling with, which helped give us the, the high taxes, the low growth, the rising mortgages, the rising shopping bills and the rising energy bills. And I think what is clear now that after 12 years of Conservative government, the Conservatives don't have the answers to the crisis because they caused the crisis. Within the past few minutes, it's been announced Michael Gove will return to frontline politics after being appointed the levelling up secretary. Gillian Keegan becomes the fifth education secretary in four months. Investigations are continuing after two men were shot dead in East London in what police have described as an appalling act of violence. A third man's in a critical condition in hospital after the shooting in Ilford early this morning. No arrests have been made. The RMT union is rescheduling one of its rail strikes next month to avoid a clash with the Royal British Legion Poppy Day. The walkout on the 3rd of November will now take place a week later on the 9th. Industrial action on the 5th of November will go ahead as planned. In a separate dispute, London Underground and Overground staff will move their strike day to the 10th. And Adidas says it's ending its partnership with the US rapper and fashion designer Kanye West over his anti-Semitic remarks. The sportswear giant said the comments were unacceptable, hateful and dangerous. Cleopatra Velutsu is Professor of brand management at the University of Glasgow. So by keeping this kind of connections with somebody who makes so severe and unacceptable uh, in the opinion of many comments, uh, practically damages how Adidas is seen. Cleopatra Velutsu, and that's the latest news on Five Live. Here's Orna with the travel. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Listen live on digital, online, smart speaker or the BBC Sounds app. Thanks, Anna. So Glasgow queues on the M8 on the eastbound side, 26 at Hillington to 23 at Ibrox. It's after a breakdown, but heading into the roadworks as well. So it's taking you 20 minutes. The M60 anti-clockwise queues at 19, Heaton Park, a breakdown in one of the lanes. The M25 queuing after an accident on the clockwise side at Junction 11 at Chertsey. And it's very slow and anti-clockwise approaching the Dartford tunnels. So that's at 1B. It's because of an earlier broken down car transporter, but because it took up two lanes, the traffic hasn't recovered at all. It's back to Junction 3 at the Swanley Interchange, joining the M20. Still slow eastbound into London over the elevated section. Heston services towards Junction 1 at the Chiswick roundabout, taking you about half an hour. And there are two lanes closed on the M3 southbound. Seven at Basingstoke South to Junction 6 for Basingstoke. Orna Merchant, Five Live Travel. Thanks for coming. Just take a seat over there, will you? I could tell that Luke was dealing with something. Withdrawn. Unable to express himself. He could barely look me in the eye. Until I discovered his love of music. And now, <laughs> he's very different. My name is Luke, and this is my first piece. Right now, it's tougher than ever for too many kids. But children in need help project workers like me turn young lives around. BBC Children in Need. We're there for you. This is Five Live, your football station. The UEFA Champions League. With Kelly Cates. Two Champions League commentary matches for you this evening. Second half to come of Salzburg against Chelsea. Chelsea leading that by a goal to nil, which means they're heading into the last 16 as group winners as it stands. And we'll be in Dortmund very shortly to say hello to James McFadden and Ian Dennis ahead of our second commentary game, which is between Borussia Dortmund and Manchester City. Away from the football, though, Australia beat Sri Lanka by seven wickets to keep alive their hopes of progressing to the semi-finals of cricket's T20 World Cup. Marcus Stoinis hit 59 off just 18 balls is the fastest half century by an Aussie in this competition and that helped to secure the seven wicket win. England play Ireland in the early hours of tomorrow morning. There's full commentary of that on Five Sports Extra from quarter to five and it's followed by New Zealand against Afghanistan at nine. Ahead of Rugby Union's Autumn Internationals, Wales have announced that Justin Tipperick will be their captain for their four matches. He replaces Dan Bigger who's out with a knee injury.
And Andy Murray came from a set down to book his place in the second round of the Swiss Indoors in Basel. At the Rugby League World Cup, Papua New Guinea take on the Cook Islands in Pool D. That one is a 7.30 kickoff, and our correspondent Dave Woods is at the Halliwell Jones Stadium in Warrington. Evening, Dave. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. It's a, it, look, this is a huge game. It's the national sport for both of these countries, and they've been in quite tight matches so far. They have. Uh, Cook Island has broke the Welsh hearts in the first game uh, when they lost, when they when they won 18 points to 12. Wonderful match. And then Papua New Guinea, really unlucky actually to, to lose to one of the tournament favourites in Tonga, uh, going down by 24 points to 18. Um, so both of them are in you know reasonable shape. And as you say, it means so much to both these nations because of what rugby league means to both those nations. And if they win tonight, well, the Cook Islands, if they can win tonight, they they confirm a place in the quarterfinals. But a lot of people saying this is probably the best. Papua New Guinean team we have ever seen over the years so they will feel that they were undercooked against Tonga if they win tonight suddenly they're in uh, in a great position and the Welsh will be desperately hoping that Papua New Guinea can win because if Papua New Guinea do win tonight that gives Wales a flicker and it is only a flicker but a flicker of a hope of making the quarterfinals as well it's sounding fantastic already uh, the home nations next in action from Friday then across the weekend so where are we up to Dave who needs what well, England are doing fantastically well. England are doing superbly well. They play against Greece. If they don't get 70 or 80 points, there'll be something wrong because, you know, Greece are playing in their first ever World Cup. A lot of part-time players, a country where rugby league was banned. You know, it's a national sport in Papua New Guinea and the Cook Island. It was actually banned up until about three months ago for all kinds of political reasons, which are too, too complicated to go into at this stage. Uh, but so England will win that and they will qualify as top of the group, flying through after a very impressive start. Scotland are at, at really disappointing tournament for them so far their, their decisive match was the opener against Italy and they lost that and then they got hammered by Australia uh, and, and Ireland like hanging on by a thread but they play New Zealand on Friday night and that would have to be a major shock for the Irish to beat New Zealand uh, to give themselves any hope of getting through so it, it looks as though England are going to be probably the, the, the sole survivors of the home nations in the final eight Dave, thanks very much for that. Thank you very much to Dave Woods. The new episode of the Five Live Rugby League World Cup podcast is out right now on BBC Sounds and you can get all the latest in detail from the tournament. Commentary of Manchester City's Champions League group match at Borussia Dortmund from 8 o'clock tonight on Five Live Sport and BBC Sounds. We're also on Five Live Final Score, so you can listen to our commentaries and watch the video printer and you can do that via the red button on the iPlayer and you can also get it on the BBC Sport website and app and app. <laughs> Let's head over to the Signal Iduna Park. Your commentary team James McFadden and Ian Dennis and it's nice and early with the team news Dano. Yes indeed uh, Kelly uh, good evening to you and Manchester City have made six changes from the side that played Brighton and Hove Albion at the weekend. Erling Haaland does start against his former side. John Stones makes a return after his hamstring injury, hasn't played since the middle of September, but making a debut in goal is Stefan Ortega. That's one of the six changes. So Ortega in goal, Stones, Ake, Gunduan will be captaining against his former team. Alvarez and Foden are the six who are brought in for Manchester City, but Akanji, he is uh, not gonna face Borussia Dortmund from the start. He's one of the players who's dropped to the bench. Yeah, Edison looked a little uncomfortable at the at the weekend, um, but but interesting that Ortega's going to be in goal, James. It just makes a difference for Manchester City, not just in terms of the, the goalkeeper, but in terms of the, the defence that's playing in front of him when it's somebody that they're not used to. Should be OK against Dortmund, though? Um, you, would, you would like to think so. I think that, you know, it can be unsettling when you've got a, a different goalkeeper um, particularly in the way that Ederson plays he plays like that sweeper keeper but you, you also see the, his distributions excellent you know he get, he get caught um, and, and almost found out with, with a short pass at the weekend but you look at his, his through ball to Haaland um, as well so it's um, yeah I, I think it can be unsettling but I think that having, having their attacking threat really helps the defence. If City can get into the rhythm and create chances and control the ball, which we expect, then I don't see it being too big of a problem. I think Ederson's on the bench, which, which would suggest that he might be, he might have an ego, he, he may well have an ego, but it's you know more of a precaution to, to give him a rest. So I think if Pep was worried about it, I'm sure he could have played in the game. 
Yeah, especially with Manchester City having already qualified for the knockout stages. It is all about topping the group. Manchester City three points clear of their opponents tonight, Dortmund. And of course, it's a return for Erling Haaland. Look, he's, he's back there. And um, Denno, you were talking to Archie Rintut on the, on the Away Days podcast yesterday. It, it could be a, a subdued reception or a subdued return for him. Yeah, I mean, Archie obviously knows uh, German football very, very well. We were having a good catch-up with him last night, and he was suggesting on the uh, the Away Days pod special that we did that it would just be polite applause for uh, for Erling Haaland, which is staggering, really, in the, when you think it, it, his record. What was it? 86 goals in 89 appearances just to get the polite applause. But they're basically, um, they're basically just saying that you've got to be a real legend here uh, in Dortmund to be appreciated by the supporters. And despite that record, Erling Haaland probably would, would not go down as a, as a Borussia Dortmund legend. Yeah, and he played so much of his time in, in empty stadia because of COVID. So it's, they weren't really there, as you say, to, to see the best uh, of Erling Haaland necessarily. And then there was all the fuss about whether or not he, he was gonna stay or whether he, or not he was gonna go. So he's gone to Manchester City. It couldn't really have gone any better for him, James. He starts again tonight. Um, against Dortmund, the, the one, well, there was one question mark when people were trying to look for reasons that it might not be the perfect move that it, it certainly looked on the surface. And that was about keeping him fit because his injury record at Dortmund wasn't amazing. But it's been quite interesting how, how Pep Guardiola has been talking about Haaland working with the, the club's physios to, to make sure that he manages himself a bit better. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the thing. They're, they're fully aware of it when they come in. Uh, and they will make sure that they can get him on the pitch because as you've seen against Copenhagen, they do miss him. I know that they've won titles without him before, but he's transformed this side. He's such a threat and he really threatens the opposition before they've even kicked a ball. Um, Denner, we just need a, a yes or no answer here. Did you get a pint glass? No. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> More on that a little bit later on. We'll be back uh, to the Sedona, uh, Signal Iduna Stadium for, the, for Dortmund against Manchester City. Now, though, we're going to head straight back to Salzburg as they're about to kick off the second half against Chelsea, with Chelsea leading 1-0. Leon Osman and Vicky Sparks. Thanks, Kelly. It's back underway here. Salzburg getting us underway, playing from right to left in the all grey kit. Chelsea in their royal blue shirts and shorts and the dark socks. Chelsea it is, who lead by the goal to nil. Mateo Kovacic with a beautiful first time strike, edge of the penalty area midway through the first half. The Salzburg come forward, headed away by Jorginho and Leon Osman for Chelsea. It's more of the same, but just be more clinical but it's Salzburg trying to be clinical early on Ocker force ball into the penalty area cut out by Jorginho and cleared away yeah really good by Jorginho there stepping across when his defense was slightly exposed at the start of the second half they've started the second half similar to how they started the first just not quite at the pace of the game allowing Salzburg being the home team to try and use the crowd and build up ahead of steam but if, this, if the second half goes the way the first half goes, but adds goals for Chelsea, more goals, Ryan Potter will be pleased because they took control of this game probably about 10 minutes in and kept hold of it till half-time, creating numerous chances. They just didn't convert the second or the third. At the moment, though, it's all defending to do for Chelsea early on in this second half. Gorner winning the free kick which will be swung in by Kjargaard from the left-hand side and the header on the edge of the six-yard box, not quite dealt with, back across by Okafor. Salzburg trying to win, they're claiming for a handball and the referee says no penalty and the ball is cleared over the halfway line. Now, at first glance, that definitely looks like it struck an arm. Is it in an unnatural position from Mateo Kovacic? And the referee is saying, let's stop play here. Chelsea have a player down. VAR will have a look. Could Chelsea be in trouble here, Leon Osman? What do we think? Well, I don't think there's any question that the ball struck the hand of, of Kovacic. I think there may have been a, a foul on Jorginho. There may not, but Kovacic tried to clear it. I think it took a maybe a slight deflection off his own foot as he maybe has kicked it. Either way, it seemed to go through his own legs, bounce on the floor and come up and hit his his arm that was behind him it was uh, it was difficult to see it didn't look like a penalty kick initially that's not how the Salzburg players thought about it just seeing the replay again he just tries to side foot it misjudges it completely it goes it bounces through his leg before it hits his uh, his trailing arm behind him the referee saw it clearly he said it was no penalty kick but as he said Salzburg players 
very upset, as are the fans, and the referee was happy to give out a few yellow cards for dissent. Yeah, and VAR have had a check, and we play on no penalty to Salzburg. And Chelsea still lead by the goal to nil. And here they come once more outside the area. Kovacic is dispossessed and will be played forward by Kjargaard for Salzburg. And now Okafor over the halfway line. Down the left-hand side to Verbu. who plays the early ball in. What a huge chance! And it's converted by Junior Adamu! Salzburg hits Chelsea on the counter-attack! And just as they did at Stamford Bridge, they've done here in Austria. They level things up at 1-1. And it's a beautiful finish from Adam, who, there's no doubt about that. Brilliant goal from Salzburg, but Chelsea still got themselves to blame. They started the second half off the pace yet again. Kovacic guilty of overrunning the ball in midfield. Thiago Silva stepped in to try and win it, completely missed it, and then they were in trouble. Salzburg players streaming forward down this left-hand side. Pulisic did his best to get back to try and stop the cross, but he couldn't. It was a beautiful delivery in behind Cucurella who tried to step across to, to get into that position that Thiago Silva had left but he just couldn't get there but I think it was Verbe from that left back spot travelled the pitch so well delivered what is a delightful ball it did bounce probably knee high and then uh, Adamu had to concentrate and he just guided it and used all the power on the ball and basically controlled it into the corner Kepa couldn't do a thing about it and I said, if you don't convert your chances in the first half, you don't keep control of the game, this is what can happen. Calmness personified from 21-year-old Junior Adamu. He is their top scorer this season, and that's in a season where he's only been a regular starter over the last month or so. But most of his goals have come from the start, and he's got another one. Ten for the season as Kepa clears away, and all of a sudden... Those missed chances for Chelsea in the first half. The good saves, we have to say as well, made by Philip Kuhn in the Salzburg goal. Are oh, the chickens coming home to roost because it's 1-1. Yeah, it is. I mean, this game certainly isn't beyond Chelsea. You know, we've sh they've shown their quality in the first half. They can wrestle back control of this game, keep possession of the ball, create more chances. But they just make it much more difficult for themselves. And they've lost possession. Here is Kjargaard once more, plays it into the space in the centre. Good block by Thiago Silva as the shot was driven in. And Verbal will play it out to the left-hand side. And Sucic once more, who was the player that picked up the yellow card for descent when Salzburg were appealing for that penalty. 1-1 one, one here on 5 Live and Salzburg rewarded for their fast start to this second half as the ball is cleared out of play by Bernardo stopping the Chelsea break and Chelsea will have a throw with Pulisic midway through the Salzburg half. Yeah, they have been rewarded and the crowd have been rewarded for staying with the team and, and they look very up for this second half. Now, what Chelsea have to do is, is quiet them down, keep possession of the ball, take the sting out of the game, make sure that you know, they just don't allow Salzburg to get any real momentum in this period of the game because you know, that could be the key. Long ball forward from Thiago Silva. Aubameyang loses out to Dedic. And the ball is played forward quickly. Looking for the run of Sucic. Cleared away by Jorginho. And now Kukurea back to Thiago Silva. He's closed down by Akafor. And again, Salzburg just putting on the press well as Chalabar goes all the way back to Kepa. 1-1 one, one here on 5 Live. The chill in the Alpine air is creeping into the Red Bull Arena. Leon Osman's put his big coat on at half-time. It's not that cold yet, Leon. As Gallagher wins the ball. Plays it forward, looking for Aubameyang. Into the penalty area. Aubameyang again is denied by Kuhn, who closes the angle well. It was well defended at the back by Salzburg. Denich there as well, doing his best to put off Aubameyang. It's a Chelsea corner. It's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it was unfortunate, that one, from Aubameyang. It was a good break from Chelsea. Conor Gallagher winning the ball quite high up as the ball bounced and played a decent ball into Aubameyang. He tried to take it with him, but as you said, with the defender right on his heels, really, he had to fight his, for everything he had. Dedic went arm to arm, using all of his strength, and then it was a battle between them both and the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper won. So corner swung in. Joshino was in there. It's off the line. Brilliant defending. What an outstanding clearance for Salzburg who come forward over the halfway line. It was Adamu back there, the player who's got them level. Clearance off the line as the corner was swung in. 
Chelsea have a throw midway through the Salzburg half. It's all action, and Salzburg are putting in such a shift when they have to defensively. Adamu, hero at one end, hero at the other. Yeah, what an influence he's had at both ends in this second half. Adamu, great finish at one end, beautifully controlled efforts, and then a full stretch, somehow managing to wrap his right foot around the ball as everybody in the stadium held their breath, thinking it had gone in to the back of the goal and somehow managed to claw it away. Jorginho straight to the referee after seeing his header cleared, asking was it over the line, checking his watch. The referee quick to say it hadn't. Forward by Chalibur up towards halfway. 1-1 one, one between Salzburg and Chelsea. We've not had time to take you through the lineups in the second half yet because it's been breathless. And we can't yet because Kovacic has played it forward but it's cut out well by Bernardo. Kukurea will send it out to the left-hand side and just kept in by Raheem Sterling. Looks as though there might have been a little tweak formation-wise for Chelsea in the second half. Looks at the moment more like a 3-5-2. But we'll see how that continues to shape up because Kai Havertz, I mean, he's just drifting around everywhere, isn't he? It's <laughs> so hard to pin down this formation for Salzburg and that's part of the plan from Graham Potter. Havertz very much given a free roll, but we'll take you through the lineups in a moment. Chelsea coming forward, cut out on the edge of the area by Pavlovic before it can reach Aubameyang and Chalabar will send it back to Thiago Silva. So Salzburg with Kuhn in goal, the back four of Dedic, Bernardo, Pavlovic and Ruber. Ahead of them, the midfield diamond of Seivald, Gorner, Kjargaard and Sucic with Okafor and Adamu, who's found the equaliser in the second half for them. As Gorner will bring it forward once more, plays it forward, looking for Okafor. Thiago Silva sends it calmly back to Kepa. So Chelsea with Kepa in goal, the back three of Chalabar, Silva and Kukurea. Ahead of them, it is fluid as Pulisic is played in by Bamiang. Pulisic into the penalty area. Pulisic tries to get the shot away. Blocked once, twice, and then three times claimed by Philip Kuhn. And again, the way that that Salzburg defence work as a unit between the back four and the goalkeeper is superb. Yeah, Chelsea getting in behind that Salzburg defence pretty easily again at the start of this second half. But Pulisic he just couldn't get the ball down under his control after Chelsea got good numbers into that area we're just seeing that Jorginho header back again it was a really good header Chelsea have had two headers now from the corner of that 66 yard box both sides both one from an in swinger one for an out swinger won them both and uh, Salzburg have done well not to concede on either so the midfield for Chelsea which has now dropped back into the diamonds so you have Jorginho Kovacic Gallagher and Havertz he really is drifting around in the middle of that with Sterling, Pulisic and Aubameyang up top and here come Chelsea once more, Kovacic plays it forward to Aubameyang, right hand side of the penalty area, dinks the ball across, cleared away by Salzburg only as far as Jorginho, 30 yards out, spreads it out to the left and Raheem Sterling, he will go all the way back to Jorginho, midway through the Salzburg half, 1-1 here on five live out to the left hand side now and Havertz plays the ball in cleared away easily by Bernardo and out of play for a Chelsea throw which Kukurea will take midway through the Salzburg half you, know, you mentioned it looked like maybe a Chelsea change in formation maybe at the start of this second half it's actually Salzburg that have done something different a Chelsea trying to adapt to it Adam who's gone on the right-hand side of a front three and kegar has gone on the left-hand side, Suchic gone right through the middle and uh, Okafor's right through the middle on his own. They were a front two for the majority of the first half but they've made that slight change and it's maybe just caught Chelsea out. Yeah, good spot, Leon. Just giving them that little bit more width, isn't it? And we've seen when Kjargaard has drifted into that left position as he did on occasion in the first half but it just gives them that delivery from the left-hand side that they can put in with Verba as well as they have a throw midway yeah, through their own I mean, half. they won't stick to it throughout the whole game because, you know, formations are fluid, we've seen that, but, you know, when they're defending, when they're, when they're out of possession, that just seems to be giving them a little bit more stability with regards to, to keeping this Chelsea team at bay. Yeah, and now the formation has drifted again. So, plenty for Potter and his counterparts. Matthias Jaisela to deal with. And it's that tactical battle that we saw between Potter and Ten Hag, didn't we? Manchester United's draw with Chelsea at Stamford Bridge will be key again, you sense, this evening. 1-1 one, one 
57 minutes played as Sterling picks it up. Left hand side of the penalty area. Good challenge in by Seibold. Such a popular player. It's roared by the home fans at the Red Bull Arena. Headed forward by Chalaber out to the right hand side. And Pulisic under pressure as well. Dispossessed by Verba. He will play the ball in field. Well read by Kovacic. Jorginho traps it on the halfway line and forward now to Chalabar. Field to Kovacic once more. He scored a quite beautiful goal from the edge of the area in the first half for Chelsea. Kukurea takes it and plays it out to the left-hand side and Sterling. Chelsea who have been pegged back in this second half here on five live. Chalabar now picks it up. Chelsea slowly but surely building towards the penalty area and here they are now as Gallagher lifts it in and Bamiyang's header was in there once more. This time drifts it out wide and it's cleared away by Seibold. Little touch by Adamu who's leveled things up for Salzburg but only as far as Jorginho who plays it forward to Kovacic towards the penalty area. Dinks it in. Havertz. Tame shot. Saved by Kuhn. But again nice Chelsea move. The end product not quite there. Yeah, the angle was just against Havertz. There was travelling away from the goal, outside the width of the six-yard box, trying to cut it back across the goalkeeper. But Chelsea just looking in that little passage of play, like that they're, they're just gaining control of the game again, just gaining control of the ball. Salzburg will still have their moments, no doubt about that, especially with this home crowd behind them. But just look like they've took the sting out of what was a very impressive first 10 or 15 minutes from the home team of this second half. 1-1, one, one, ball cleared out of play for Chelsea by Kovacic, so Salzburg with the throw on the halfway line. Yes, this packed stadium, just under 30,000 in here. That's a sellout crowd and the fans in the lower tier away to our left, which is very much the singing tier at the Red Bull Arena, bouncing up and down, the red and white flags waving. This was one of those, it looks impressive. Anyone behind the flag is only going to see half of the match, aren't they? Because the flag will go and then it'll come and then it'll go, but creating a good atmosphere at their side back on level terms. Yeah, I wouldn't want to sit there myself. You wouldn't really get to see much of the action when they're in full swing as they are. But there you go, Chelsea. After me, just giving them a little bit of a pat on the back. Just guilty of unnecessarily giving the ball away inside their own half. And that was a pattern of the first 10 or 15 minutes of the first half when Salzburg had their joint and they've started the second half similar vein. Seibold will pick it up on the right-hand side. For Salzburg. Level at 1 1 here on 5 Live. They win another throw. And Salzburg preparing to make a change, which will be made right now, in fact. Luka Sucic, who recovered from injury for this match and has impressed in that number 10 role, is being replaced by Benjamin Sheshko. Now, this young man, 19 years of age, I'm not going to say he's the next Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland, of course, he spent a season at Salzburg and is very much part of their history. But he is hugely, hugely rated. He's a Slovenian international. He's their youngest debutant, their youngest goal scorer as well. And he might have seen a fabulous volley that he scored against Sweden recently on the angle. It's an absolutely outstanding goal. He's got six for the season for Salzburg. And this just shows, doesn't it, Leon, that they feel that they're on top and they're making a change to try and cement that good position in the game at 1-1 against Chelsea. Yeah, well, they've got a bit of momentum now. You can hear it, you know, through, through the microphones here. The fans are, are very much up for this. He's come on. Ball into the penalty area, looking for Rockerford. Cleared away by Thiago Silva, out for a Salzburg throw. It's all Salzburg at the moment. It is, and he's come on and he's gone right up top to play against what looks like Cucurella at the moment. Adamu is the player that's just dropped back into that midfield number 10 role behind, uh, behind his striker. Ball into the penalty area. Here is Adamu, nice turn. Very cool interception by Thiago Silva on the edge of his own six-yard box. Out to Raheem Sterling, who under pressure will clear away. And he does well there. Sterling gets the nick of the Salzburg player. And it's a Chelsea throw deep in their own territory. Salzburg won, Chelsea won on five lines. Yeah, again, they, they look much better, Chelsea, keeping possession of the ball in the opposition's half. I know that's quite a, an, an easy thing to think, but when they do, their distances are, are perfect. They're, they're keeping the ball well, they're causing problems in their own half, but the distances aren't right. Loose touch, given away and blazed over from 25 yards by Okafor. Again, it's what was it, five Chelsea players, you could throw a blanket over all of them, trying to play in tight areas on the edge of their own penalty area, giving the ball away. I think it's definitely a work in progress, this, this Graham Potter-Chelsea switch that, that he's done this evening. I think 
there's been a, a, a lot of things that have been successful about it. I'm sure he'll want to work on how they play out better from the back, keeping the ball better. When they've done it, certainly once in the first half, they nearly scored an amazing goal, but giving the ball away far too much for Graham Potter's liking. Yeah, plenty of chances for Chelsea in the first half, but they went in with just the one goal lead at the break. And they've been pegged back by Junior Adamu in this second half, cancelling out Kovacic's opener. Kovacic just about collects that ball on the halfway line, spreads the play to the right-hand side. And Chalabar in field now to Conor Gallagher. 1-1, one, one, 63 minutes gone in this match here in Salzburg. As the skies now dark above us here in Austria, a stadium that is surrounded by the most beautiful mountains right nestled in the foothills of the Alps. It is a beautiful city. And it's home comforts that Chelsea are trying to break here. Havertz, oh, what a brilliant goal! In off the crossbar from the edge of the area. We've seen two crackers from Chelsea this evening and this one puts them back in front. Havertz with a beauty. Salzburg won Chelsea two. Oh, what a finish. I mean, we all know he's capable of it, Kai Havertz. He scored one for Germany against England not too long back. It was quite similar to this one, right in off the postage stamp. But again, as soon as Chelsea get into the Salzburg half, when Jorginho gets in possession of the ball and Kovacic and they move it quickly, Salzburg are struggling to cover the distances as well as they do in the other half of the field. It gets moved to Pulisic, he cuts inside, doesn't do anything in particular once he receives the ball from Jorginho, it just takes his time. Conor Gallagher makes the run on the outside of him, he spins back into the field, plays it into Kai Havertz, edge of the D, centre of the goal, one touch to drag it across his body, half uh, behind him a step where he can then get his left foot round it and he whips it with power and pace and again, for the second time in this match, the goalkeeper can only watch it as it hits the back of the goal. Kovacic dispossessed by Seibold as Salzburg looked to hit back immediately, but the ball forward from Cesco is poor and it's out of play for a Chelsea goal kick. All right then, Leon Osman, pick your favourite. We've seen two crackers from Kovacic and Havertz. Oh, I think I think the Kovacic one was more difficult. It was reaction. The, the, it just came to him from a, a defensive clearance and, and his ability to hit that on the move. I thought that was... I thought that was certainly the most difficult, but that one was probably more pleasing on the eye from, from Kai Havertz. Right, you go Kovacic and I'll go Havertz. I think I just picked them both there, didn't I? 2-1 <laughs> Chelsea leads. Two fabulous goals. And coming at the right time for Chelsea in the second half. But again, miscue clearance from Chalaba. And Salzburg with something just to build on here. They've got a corner. And they trail by two goals to one. Yeah, they do, but they certainly won't feel they're out of this game. They've already pulled one goal back at the start of this second half. The crowd are very much behind them. And they do have um, real striking ability on the field. So Seibold with the corner for Salzburg, powerfully away by Thiago Silva. Will be picked up by Dedic. Lifts it back in, appeals for offside from the Chelsea players. The Salzburg grey shirts rather lift it because most of them were offside. Seibold will whip it back in, cleared away by Chalaber left and then driven right into the arms of Kepa by Noah Okafor. It was a good lead by Adamu who knew that Okafor was right behind him on the angle. Would have had to be pretty special. Kovacic Havertz levels of special to break Kepa from there. Yeah, well it nearly was. He pulled into a position at the, the far edge of the penalty area and just waited for the ball to come to him. And when he did, had no other thought in his mind than to hit that on the on the volley as it, as it came to him. And, Easy save for Kepper in the A, but good effort. Good ball over the top from Thiago Silva. Oh. And again, Kuhn does so well there. Pulisic's racing down. Kuhn gets there ahead of him, but also managed to slide and keep his body inside the penalty area and cradle the ball to himself and set Salzburg away once more. Chelsea preparing to make a change. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is ready and waiting on the touchline. Chelsea, who now lead by two goals to one. But Salzburg coming forward. Sheshko outside of the area. Oh, good save, Kepper. He got real power behind that. Benjamin Sheshko, a low drive, pushed behind by Kepper for the Salzburg corner. Oh, in that one little movement of the game there, he showed everything he's capable of. He got right up against Chalabar, just gave him a bump to, to out-muscle him, brought the ball down brilliantly with his 
instep, another touch out of his feet and then hit it so hard and quick that I thought he'd already beaten Kepa before he died, but it was a brilliant save from the Chelsea goalkeeper. Really got down low quickly and a really strong left arm. Well, Chelsea just making the substitution in time because Kovacic has already come off. Loftus-Cheek was waiting. He's eventually allowed to come on. And they're back to their full complement for this corner. Salzburg looking for their second leveller of the match here on Five Live. And the height is up from the back. Pavlovic, the centre-half, one of those there. And it's drifted into the edge of the six-yard box and Chalabar wins the header. Surrounded by grey shirts, it's behind for another Salzburg corner. Yeah, really good header by Chalabar. He's, he's made a few of them inside the six-yard box as people rely on him. He's big, he's tall, he can leap. And Chelsea need him because Salzburg had three players arriving right on cue, putting him under severe pressure. So Nicolas Seibold comes over to take this corner for Salzburg. Chelsea lead by two goals to one. Seivold with the delivery, kept a big punch, good punch out of the penalty area, almost to Sterling will help it on. But the blue shirts are all back defending, so Salzburg will pick it up once more and send it in once more. And Kepa's beaten in the air, and Thiago Silva chested off the line and clears behind for the corner. Corner's been given, Kepa is down. And Chelsea are protesting. The referee is saying there was nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The Chelsea medical staff are coming on. So, no foul given. Salzburg with the corner. Well, I was about to compliment Kepa for his effort at getting the initial corner. He came out and he met it with a strong fist and made sure he cleared the penalty area. But as the ball came back in, he just seemed to get overexcited. He started eight yards out he was always trying to come for it and he meets it 12 yards out and he gets out out, out jumped really from uh, I think it was Pavlovic who just out jumps in the centre half up from the back and heads it towards the goal if not for the clever and quick thinking and the defensive nous of Thiago Silva getting back onto onto that line to chest it and kick it out for another corner kick under pressure Chelsea would have been level again well, Kepa is being helped to his feet. And the referee certainly saw nothing wrong with it. Pavlovich saw nothing wrong with it. And as you say, Leon Osman, I think he's just out jumped Kepa there. And were it not for the presence of mind of Thiago Silva, that was 2 2. Yeah, a goalkeeper should never be out jumped by an outfield player, no matter how big they are, really. When you've got the use of your spring and you're coming to meet the ball as he was there and using his arms as well. He got lucky. Well, he does have the height, Pavlovich, and he's in there once more as Salzburg take this corner from the right-hand side. Kepa, big punch again, deals with it well. Will Chelsea deal with it second time? Sterling misses the header. It's sent forward by Seibold, but Conor Gallagher will pick it up for Chelsea. They've got four players, five, ready to counter if they can control it. But Pulisic can't control it, and the ball bounces out of play. But Salzburg leaving themselves so open there. If Pulisic picks that up, he has two grey shirts with him. There are four unmarked Chelsea players to his left. Yeah, well, Conor Gallagher just couldn't get the ball past his opposite number to make that switch initially because, as you said, Chelsea had four players un unmarked on the halfway line. The only pass he could pick out under pressure was down the line to Pulisic, and Pulisic's first touch was dreadful. Didn't give his... Uh, didn't give himself or his teammates an opportunity to, to get one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Yeah, wasted opportunity there for Chelsea from what would have been a very good counter-attack. Still, the goal advantage. It was 1-0. They were pegged back to 1-1 after not taking chances in the first half. Is that another moment that will come back to haunt them in this game? They lead by two goals to one. 19 minutes plus out of time to play here at the Red Bull Arena as Pavlovic, the tall centre-half, wins the header. Forward by Chalabar, it's an up and under, but Aubameyang is there, but who is there ahead of him? It's Philip Kuhn, of course it is. He's had a very good game for Salzburg, number one, just 24 years of age, and the two shots that have beaten him from Kovacic and Havertz have been of the highest quality. Kikarea with the interception, Chelsea leading. A win tonight secures their progression to the Champions League last 16 with a game to spare. Yeah, and they'll want to get that done here and tonight. They'll want to make sure that the progression is, is secured. So, yes, Graham Potter has been pleased with the performance of his team for the majority of this game. Not the start of either half, but the way they've gone about the business thereafter. Two absolutely quality goals 
I think I was a touch surprised to see him take Kovacic off. I thought he was having a, a decent game, energy-wise, in the middle of the field, but I don't think that's the last of the subs. I see a few potential more subs to be made. One more early kickoff in the Champions League this evening. Sevilla are one up at home to Copenhagen. And a reminder that commentary of Borussia Dortmund against Manchester City follows us on Five Live with Ian Dennis and James McFadden. City already through. If they avoid defeat, they will win the group this evening. Kepper plays it forward out to the right-hand side. Well intercepted by Werber and Salzburg's grey shirts are streaming forward once again. Sheshko just trying to go past three Chelsea players there. In the end, fouls Jorginho and it will be a free kick to Chelsea midway through their own half. Salzburg one, Chelsea two here on Five Live. Yeah, Salzburg have been better in this second half. In the final third, certainly with the the introduction of, of Shishko and you know with having Okafor and Adamu up there already but then the attacks mainly have still come from Chelsea being guilty of giving the ball away. They look dangerous at set pieces don't they and that I'm sure will be a target for them they'll get more before this match is over can Chelsea get the goal that would give them the breathing space. Sterling in possession on the left hand side. Aspilicueta and Breuer are preparing to come on. Nicely worked down the left as Chelsea pull it back. Oh, complete miscue from Pulisic. Gallagher's effort is blocked and Salzburg clear away. Well, it's not been Christian Pulisic's night and particularly not in the last 10 minutes. That was a huge opportunity unmarked on the penalty spot and he got it all wrongly on Osman. Yeah, it just didn't look comfortable when the ball was coming to his left foot. Looked like he was having to concentrate on it with every stride as he approached the ball and ends up completely missed kicking it. Goes through his own legs and that was, again, absolutely brilliant play from Chelsea. It was Havertz and Sterling down that left-hand side. Cute little ball inside the fullback from Sterling to Havertz who thought might fire it across the six-yard box to where Aubameyang was running in but pulled it back to uh, to, to an in-rushing Pulisic who plucked his lines at the big moment. Big it to Chelsea on the halfway line and no chance for Pulisic to redeem himself. He's being taken off. Azpilicueta is coming on and Aubameyang is also making way for Breuer. He's had a couple of big chances in this match. Aubameyang been denied by Kuhn on a couple of occasions but no goal for the third Champions League game running for Aubameyang Breuer who again has looked very lively in the appearances he's made for Chelsea this season impressed very much on loan at Southampton last season and given a chance to impress once again here in Austria yeah and he's gone right up through the middle he'll go right up against both of those two centre-halves of uh, of Salzburg and try and continue to get the opportunities that Aubameyang has been presented with but I'm sure he'll be hoping to finish but the interesting thing is with the introduction of, of Aspel Aquetta there Chelsea look like they've gone straight into a 4-4 well 1-1 one, one maybe with Havertz playing behind Broja but Cucurella certainly got into a left back role and uh, Aspel Aquetta's gone right back with the two centre halves being obviously Chalabar and, and Silva so Salzburg in possession as Chelsea look to see this out. Verbers ball into the area, cleared away by Thiago Silva, brought down by Conor Gallagher, who will play it forward to Jorginho. And now Loftus Cheek takes it in his long stride. Out to Raheem Sterling. Has Kukurea on the overlap, and Sterling will just stop and check as we enter the final 14 minutes plus added time here in Salzburg. Chelsea leading by two goals to one. Chelsea very close to going through to the Champions League knockout stages with a match to spare. Salzburg preparing their own double change. Andreas Ulmer, their captain, just back from injury, only fit enough for the bench, not fit enough to play from the start. He's a big player for them and they need big players now. Salzburg, who have played well in this match. Chelsea have had the chances though to wrap it up. They haven't taken them. They lead by two goals to one on five live. Here is Azpilicueta. Space down the right hand side. Kiargaard getting across just to close that down. Azpilicueta pulls it back to Jorginho. Plays it forward to Gallagher. Space inside the box. Forced out. Plays it in. Is blocked well by Gorner and dispossessed well by Gorner. Who will now run it past Azpilicueta. Brought down by Azpilicueta. Salzburg free kick just outside their own box. Yeah, with that change in, in formation, Chelsea should be able to now get a bit of joy with their fullbacks getting into attacking positions if, you know, they arrive a touch late because, you know, the, the midfield three of Salzburg shouldn't be able to cover those spaces quickly enough. So the double change being made. 
Max Wurber replaced by Andreas Ulmer. So we'll hand the captain's armbands over to him as well. And there will be no goal against Chelsea for Noah Okafor, who scored at Stamford Bridge. He is off. And Rocco Schimic is on. So experience in Ulmer. He is the most experienced player by far in terms of the outfielders in Salt. Berg's squad, 36 years of age. Nobody else is over the age of 30. And they've won a free kick here, Salzburg, third of the way inside the Chelsea half. And, and you just get the sense, Leon, as we enter the last 12 minutes, plus added time, they've shown enough, haven't they, Salzburg, that Chelsea know very much this is not safe yet. The progression to the last 16, which they're doing at the moment with a victory, is not yet safe. Yeah, absolutely. Chelsea need another goals cushion to feel a touch more secure, Salzburg fancy themselves. Giargaard with the left footed free kick, it's a poor delivery on that occasion straight into the arms of Kepa. Yeah, unexpected actually. I mean, the, the quality of delivery into the penalty area has been very good this evening for, for Salzburg, giving them an opportunity to go and attack. I think Shalopar's had to make some in, very impressive headers back there, so it'd be disappointing to have uh, just wasted that free kick. So Kepa in possession just inside his own penalty area. Just counting them up for Salzburg now with Rocco Schimic coming on. At least four 19-year-olds they have on the pitch. I mean, you talk about giving youth a chance, but it's not just a mantra at, at Salzburg that they say and, and, and don't live up to. Very much is at the heart of their philosophy. And it's a philosophy that gave them the best ever Champions League run last season. They reached the last 16 for the first time. The first time an Austrian side has done that. They're trailing 2-1 with Chelsea in possession. Do. It's something they do, you know, to, to bring players through, progress them. Players that are young have hunger and energy. They can get about the pitch throughout the entire 90 minutes, as Chelsea are seeing here today. They've, they've passed the ball, and normally when you pass the ball against teams like this, you wear them down. Not this, not this Salzburg team. They're a team full of energy. Well, Chelsea have won the free kick here, but it's Junior Adamu who has stayed down, their top scorer, who did pull it back to 1-1 earlier this evening before Havertz, with a quite spectacular effort from the edge of the box, in off the bar, restoring Chelsea's advantage. So, you would think that Adamu, he's, he's got to be in some discomfort here because there's, there's no point to delaying the game. Chelsea have the free kick. Salzburg need to get on with things. Yeah, well, he just tried to reach around uh, Ruben Loftus' cheek to get a foot in as Aspilicueta played that ball into the Chelsea midfielder, but Loftus' cheek protected it really well. So Adam, who ended up dangling his leg, Loftus' cheek fell on top of it when it was stretched at a, an awkward angle, and that's why he's uh, finding it very difficult to, to, to not only get off, up, but walk it off. Well, he is just about up to his feet and jogging across the centre circle now. It's Chelsea in possession with Loftus-Cheek. A reminder, Borussia Dortmund against Manchester City follows our commentary. Kickoffs at 8 o'clock. City avoid defeat. They'll win the group. They are already through to the knockout stages. Tomorrow, Tottenham against Sporting Lisbon. We have the whole match for you on Five Live. A win will take Tottenham through to the last 16. That is where Chelsea are heading as things stand. They just need the victory. They're 2-1 up here in Austria. With nine minutes plus out of time to play. Which will be music to the ears of Graham Potter. I thought I had to get another sound of music reference in before we finish the on. You were dancing up and down the steps earlier in Salzburg earlier today? Yeah, it was a sight I was more than willing to go and see. This is such a wonderful city. So many things to see that we've we've enjoyed our day, but it's all about Chelsea enjoying their night and, and performing and, and getting the results. And as I said, for the majority of this season, Chelsea have, have been impressive, changing formations yet again. We spoke about the fluidity of, of Graham Potter's team. And at it again. So not content with the 19-year-old, Salzburg have added an 18-year-old into the mix, Dion Camery. Big reception for him. He's not played since mid-September. He's been out with a shoulder injury. And he has replaced Junior Adamu. Another player, very popular, the Austria Youth International, making his mark this season and on to try and make his mark in this match. Eight minutes plus out of time to play. Chelsea lead by two goals to one. And that will be a free kick there. Thiago Silva just went into the back of him there. In, in terms, it's one of those where 
Marks, the substitute, Rocco Simic, has just lifted Silver up with his back almost, and Silver's gone over the top of him, and you always get those as the defender, don't you? That was a really awkward fault, and the referee was immediately concerned for Thiago Silva and gave the free kick, stopped the game. Thiago Silva landing on his neck, his, his head area. It's one of those where the striker just feels he's been beaten and just gets under the back and under um, just above the base of the spine and just gives the defender a nudge and Thiago Silva can't do anything, he can't control his fall, he's fallen backwards, his arms aren't there to protect him and thus he lands on that neck, top of the shoulders area and uh, the medical staff quickly onto the field. Yeah, really painful one for Thiago Silva. As Leon says, the medical staff of Chelsea are on. Just looking at the reaction of the players, that's often what you look for, isn't it, in terms of the seriousness of something. I think that they went to the referee, they were very unhappy about it. But Thiago Silva now sitting up, and it's where players are surrounding their own teammate. I think that's, that's where you get the, the most serious concern as an observer. So hopefully for Thiago Silva, this isn't going to be serious and he, he is now standing up but a really awkward fall as you say Leon and yeah. thankfully he's okay yeah you have concern because most of us have experienced falling from a height and falling onto that part um, of your shoulder stroke neck and it's um, it's very uncomfortable to say the least you can cause some real damage in doing so it wasn't a great challenge from uh, from the Salzburg striker but it wasn't the worst one either as you know it's just a, a really awkward fall by Thiago Silva well, he is up to his feet on the sidelines. As lost as cheek plays it forward. It's Simic who committed that foul, who does jump. It bounces off him. And Thiago Silva is back onto the field of play. And Simic is near enough to him to exchange a few words. But Thiago Silva is more interested in, in trying to <laughs> get his back line sorted out. As Chelsea look to close this one out and progress to the last 16 of the Champions League as they're doing at the moment leading by two goals to one five minutes plus out of time to play here in Austria as Kikorea will send that forward Thiago Silva as it comes back at him will help it on and again a challenge this time that goes against Armando Breuer of Chelsea and it's, it's one of those where Pavlovic is coming in and if he hasn't just given a free kick for a similar but also quite different <laughs> incident there I'm not sure Breuer really does too much wrong there it's, it's certainly not the same as what Simic did to Thiago Silva but Pavlovic goes straight down and Salzburg have the free kick yeah I thought Broja was was pretty unlucky there but as you said that kind of contact similar dissimilar fall but similar kind of contact that saw Salzburg get the free kick and it's put them on the attack again Yes, they're Captain Ulmer with the throw from the left-hand side. Nice back heel from the centre-half, Pavlovic, as Chelsea clear the ball away. Salzburg have a throw. Level with the edge of the penalty area. Left-hand side. And Andreas Ulmer is preparing to launch this one in. And Pavlovic has gone forward. They're sending forward the height from the back with Ulmer's long throw. It is flicked on by Šešić, cleared away by Loftus-Cheek, up towards halfway, will be chased by Breuer, putting a bit of pressure on Bernardo, a little shove in the back on Bernardo there, but the referee lets it go, Bernardo does well there, Gallagher comes in, and Gallagher is deemed to have fouled Bernardo there, he went for goal after the whistle had gone and gets a yellow card, it was caught well by Philip Kuhn anyway, but he's never that from Gallagher, wide on the wing, but Salzburg can bring it away. Yeah, he Picks up a yellow card there for Henry Freeman and trying to waste time. Battle for Breuer. Coming forwards on the edge of the penalty area. Space here on the right-hand side and Kepa saves, fumbles. Kukurea will clear away at the expense of a corner. It was the right-back Amar Dedic coming in there. So much space as he had as he broke into the penalty area. Kepa makes the save, that's the main thing, but fumbles it behind for the corner. Yeah, Raheem Sterling just losing his defensive concentration there. The right-back, he's just getting off his shoulder and getting a bit too much space inside the Chelsea penalty area. A decent effort, one you'd expect Kepa to save. So corner to Salzburg. The Red Bull Arena raises the volume once again as Kepa comes, doesn't really get on it. And the shot is driven wide on the angle. What an opportunity for Luca Gorner. The 19-year-old as Chelsea just didn't deal with that ball. And he can't finish from a tight angle. It's not necessarily the play he'd want it to fall to. 
He's never scored for Salzburg, only arrived this summer, but he plays in defensive midfield. You really want one of the forwards there, but Chelsea let off. Yeah, it was a difficult chance, really, as it came to the far post. Again, Kepa guilty of just flapping it at that corner as it came in, just getting his fingertips to it. No more, and actually fortunate for Chelsea, it fell to to Gorner on off, ba off balance at the far post and he could only hit it over the top of the crossbar. So double change being made for Chelsea as they try and eke out some more seconds. Hakim Ziyech is coming on for Raheem Sterling. Conor Gallagher will make way for Mason Mount. Mount who incidentally if he manages to pick up a yellow card in the final few minutes will miss Chelsea's final group match at home to Dinamo Zagreb next week. As things stand they won't need that to secure qualification because they're heading through with this victory if they can see it out. Two minutes plus out of time to play. Chelsea lead by two goals to one on five live. Borussia Dortmund against Manchester City is our commentary to follow this evening. And Salzburg are not done yet. Here comes Kiaga down the left-hand side. Cesic picks it up, 30 yards out. Again, there's the space over on the right-hand side. Kukurea coming across to try and cut it out. The shot driven in, headed away by Thiago Silva and cleared away for a throw. And again, it's Dedic cutting in from the right. Chelsea have had the warning and they haven't heeded it. Yeah, but as I mentioned, if you are only a goal ahead in these late stages, the opposition are going to flood men forward. Long throw into the penalty area, bounces, almost brought down. Kukurea manages to shepherd Shimic out, and the cross back in is blocked behind. It is a Salzburg corner, and the side that have not lost at home since February 2021, that are unbeaten in their last 17 this season, they've got hopes of pulling level once again. And you can see why that's the case. Put teams under severe pressure this late in this game. Here is the corner, drifted into the crowded six-yard box. It's flicked away by Chalaba for another Salzburg corner, left-hand side this time. Yeah, and you see how quick they are to get over here to take the corner. They see that the clock is ticking away. They don't want to lose this impressive record of theirs. They've been okay in the second half, Salzburg. They put Chelsea under severe pressure, but up to this point, they've stood up to it. Seibold's delivery in the final minute of normal time. The header is won by Breuer. Good punch by Kepper. Comes out and is driven in by Camari from the edge of the box, straight into the arms of Kepper. And one, two, three, four Chelsea players go to their number one and slap him on the back and say, we're nearly there. Yeah, that was a good bit of play by Kepper. The ball looped up into the air and he was quick to come out of to it. Punched it to the edge of the penalty area and then comfortably took the second effort as it came back his way. Could have took a deflection or two, but he kept his eyes on it and gratefully brought it into his belly. Six minutes of added time. Chelsea lead 2-1 in Austria. Breuer loses out. Chelsea, who are heading through to the last 16 with the game to spare as things stand. But if they're pegged back, they'd have to wait to see if AC Milan can beat Dinamo Zagreb. Six minutes. We'll find out. Will it be through? on their own terms for Chelsea. Here is Ziyech, right-hand side, exchanges passes with Jorginho. And now forwards by Azpilicueta to Ziyech once more. Camry wins the free kick for Salzburg. And Kjargaard will move forward as Salzburg send the players forward once more. Their captain, Andreas Ulmer, plays it long. Up to the edge of the penalty area, cleared away by Thiago Silva, and he's done brilliantly there, Silva. Used all that experience, not only does he complete the clearance, but he wins the free kick as well. Chelsea are not happy with the challenge. It looks as though Kepper has gone into the book there for descent, even though Chelsea have won the free kick. Just need to be careful here, Chelsea, and as Piliqueta, who's taken the armband after coming on, is just moving the players away. They don't need it to boil over here. No, well, Kepa was guilty of rushing out and pushing. I think it was Shimic in the back, feeling that the contact he'd made on Thiago Silva was a little bit excessive, and the referee hasn't allowed that all evening long, so no surprise to see him get the yellow card. Kepa's got to move away here, because the last thing he wants to do is get another yellow card. Just, just He's still talking to the referee, Kepa. Thiago Silva's not happy. He's up to his feet, and it's the second one. It's because it's the second one, is it? It was Simic before that backed into Thiago Silva when we saw that very awkward fall. Yeah. So that is why Kepa's reacting as he did, but... I actually thought the bigger foul was on um, on Chalabar. I think uh, Pavlovich just barged into him. The referee allowed that one to continue, and then 
actually trying to, to pull the second one over Thiago Silva because they're, they're definitely trying to leave it all out there this Salzburg team but Chelsea since they went to back four yes Salzburg put players forward you know so Chelsea probably had to react get more players defensively but they haven't created a chance it's just been kind of backs to the wall trying to make sure they see this game out might get that one here as Havertz knees it up and then tries the volley it's always drifting away from goal and Salzburg managed to clear it's picked up by Chelsea and Thiago Silva but poor ball for once from Thiago Silva and Salzburg will go for goal from distance and the flag is up anyway and Kepa very calmly just cleared that away from his near post okay. now has the ball gone out of play there is that what the officials are saying on the far side Chelsea yeah got lucky got the there really anyway. Thiago Silva again gave the ball away it's just getting in, just getting a toe on it but then he slipped as he went to chase after it and the ball just ran out of play before he could have that effort at goal but you know as I said Chelsea just uh, feel like they're hanging on at the moment and considering their first half performance it shouldn't really be the case but you know, these evenings are never comfortable throughout the 90 minutes and if they can see this result through they'll be really pleased three minutes of added time to play Chelsea lead by two goals to one the other early kickoffs at Thea and now 3 0 up at home to Copenhagen. Commentary of Borussia Dortmund against Manchester City follows us here on Five Live. And Kukurea is taking every single second that he can over this throw. It's level with the Salzburg penalty area. But that's it. It's what this result means as well. It's the fact that it's sending Chelsea through to the last 16. It just adds that extra bit of pressure and the need, perhaps, in the minds of the players for a bit of gamesmanship just take as long as you can and try and get the goal that would seal it as Jorginho tries a tame effort from 20 yards out it's easily saved by Philip Kuhn Breuer is not moving out of the way and Kuhn is saying let's just get on with it and send it over the halfway line Chalaba wins the header two minutes of added time to play Chelsea leading by two goals to one here in Austria as Salzburg the Austrian champions pick up possession but it's a poor header from Benjamin Sheshko and the ball goes out of play and the seconds continue to tick away and that's good news for Chelsea 90 seconds to play they lead 2-1 they're on the brink of the last 16 yeah and they'll be they will be pleased with this result you know not only the fact that it's season through but we mentioned that nobody's won here since I think you said it was April 2021 players take pride in that you know we're going to go there and we're going to be the team that that stopped that that run from continuing so It'll be, uh, it'll be a good result and, and many fronts for these Chelsea players and one that will continue to, to just bring more confidence to Graham Potter's team. Chelsea with the throw deep in Salzburg territory into the final minute of added time. Yes, Villarreal in the Europa League, the last side to win here at the Red Bull Arena. 17 games unbeaten they are, home and away this season. But it looks as though it will be victory for Chelsea, defeat for Salzburg, who have won the throw deep in their own territory. Mount tries to steal it, cleared away by Ulmer up towards halfway. Loftus Cheek wins the header, it's sent forward by Seibold and Thiago Silva very, very calmly heads that away. Great direction on the header as well, out to us Piliqueta and Chelsea will bring it down the right hand side. Havertz, who has scored what looks as though it will be the winner plays it out of play we're into the final 15 seconds that's Villaquita good interception and then good drawing of the foul as well very well done by the Chelsea captain Chelsea are nearly there yeah great experience just stepped in front of uh, of Kiergaard when he wasn't concentrating well enough he thought the ball was going to go long it was uh, Aspilicueta saw what was happening and then he had an opportunity to re release Ziyech through but he decided to use all of that experience and just take the foul, go to ground, and try and just see this clock tick by. Well, we don't often see Graham Potter animated, but he really appealed for that foul, both arms up in the air, because he knew that Chelsea were nearly there, and in fact they are there. They've beaten Salzburg by two goals to one at the Red Bull Arena, and they are through to the Champions League last 16 with a game to spare. Leon Osman, we could say they did it the hard way. They had chances that they didn't take. But in the end, two goals of pure quality from Mateo Kovacic and Kai Havertz have done the job for Chelsea. Yeah, the game was won by two moments of absolute brilliance from these Chelsea players. In the first half, it, it was all about quality. The first half, they showed what they're capable of, moving the ball, creating chances, looking crisp, looking exciting. 
everything that we've been asking for from this Chelsea team create chances look bright in the final third and they did that the second half was all about character they had to after not taking those first half chances they had to grind this out they had to stand up to it not quite an onslaught from this Salzburg team but severe pressure certainly in the last 10 or 15 minutes of the game trying to hang on to that one goal margin but they did it they made some good blocks they did they did it as a team and Graham Potter will be really pleased with this result tonight so Chelsea through to the knockout stages of the Champions League and they could win the group this evening as well if Dinamo Zagreb fail to beat AC Milan later that honour will be Chelsea's as well but the main job is done it's been done by two goals to one here in Austria